Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you so, so much uh, for joining us this afternoon on a, what is a very, very, well, for me anyways, a dreary uh, Tuesday afternoon in March um, for this webinar on how to design a world-class client experience. Uh, my name is Dan, uh, and I'm the head of marketing at Next Gen Planners and also uh, the head of, uh, sorry, the chief designer at Doc Vinci uh, as well. I've seen somebody just raised their hand there. Um, I hope everything's okay. Um, Chris raised his hand. Um, but if you do have any questions, just drop them in the chat or in the Q&A uh, with, with sound or anything like that as we go along. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen uh, as I do have some slides. Uh, and then I'm also going to make this full screen. And if you guys could just give me a wave if everything is working and you can see everything, that would be awesome. Uh, cool, I've got some raised hands there. So that's good. Thank you for your help. Very uh, engaged audience today, hopefully. So uh, as I said, today we're looking at how to design a world-class uh, client experience. So hopefully what you'll do today is you'll pick up some new ideas that you can Im implement in your financial planning business or any business uh, to improve the experience that your clients uh, go through. Um, so some of the things we'll cover today, we've already looked at in the past, but there's some new ideas in there that uh, we've been working on recently as well that hopefully you'll find interesting. So what we're going to do is we'll look at some examples of world-class client experiences from firms that we've been working with, um, firms that have you know really changed the way that they do things for their clients uh, when it comes to documents, when it comes to experiences uh, and, and, and that kind of things. Uh, we will not tell you how you should do every step of the experience uh, because no two financial planning businesses are the same. Uh, no two financial planning businesses have the same clients or the same experience or the same journey or anything like that. We're going to just show you some ideas from the world-class firms that we've been working with and what makes them uh, world-class as well. Uh, the thing I do want to point out is that I'm not a financial planner. Um, so uh, I am qualified financial planner and I have worked in financial planning businesses before. Uh, but these are ideas from the firms that we work with. There's nothing worse than somebody who's not what you are telling you how you should do things. I'm not doing that today. All I'm doing is trying to give you ideas to show you how you can improve the experience that your clients go through. Um, and you have probably heard some of the things that we'll talk about today as well. So generally... What we see as client experience is it's it's actually three parts, but for today, we're going to look at two parts because we're missing out the pre-client um, experience. So the prospecting or the lead generation or anything like that. We could talk for hours on that, but today we're just going to look at once they're actually in your sphere. Uh, and there's two parts to that. Usually there is onboarding and ongoing. So onboarding is what we would call the initial financial planning process where you're you know going through the, the, the actual financial plan when they're first onboarding. The ongoing bit is what we would usually call the annual servicing. Um, been a lot of talk about that recently in the news, of course, uh, but that is where we would usually meet up with clients every six, 12 months, whatever it might be. And that ongoing financial planning service that we all really, really value. And we know how valuable that is for clients. So these are the two parts that we'll look at today. So let's get into it then. So the, the first bit that of a financial planning process usually starts with something like an initial phone call. So usually clients come to you from referrals, they come to you from uh, maybe sometimes your website, they come to you from existing clients. Whatever happens normally, it nearly always, 99% of the time starts with an initial phone call on the, on the phone. It could be a Zoom uh, or Teams meeting where you just kind of get to understand what a client has got in touch with you for, what they're looking for, and trying to really explain a little bit about the way that you do things, and really just to kind of get a fit of whether you actually want to work with that client as well. This is usually the part where there is a bit of a vanity contest going on. So they might be also chatting to five or six different financial advice firms in the area. Um, they might have seen stuff online. So at this point, they're looking for reasons to work with you, but they're also looking for reasons to not work with you as well. And this is where you can kind of start that process of really standing out from other financial planning businesses. So the first point of how to make it world-class, and we'll do this for every step in that journey that we're going to look at today, is to avoid rushing to solutions. Now, this is nothing to do with documents or anything like that. This is just something that we've seen from financial planning businesses. And I would guarantee that most of you in the audience already do this, but it's just to kind of remind 
people that this really does look like world class when you see it and it's to avoid rushing to solutions and to listen to and understand instead this is one of the things that i really struggled with when i was you know training to be a financial planner was i always used to say well you need that then or you need this then and i actually used to skip looking listening really truly understanding what the client is looking for and you can guarantee that the other financial advice firms, at least one or two of them will rush to solutions straight away. So the first thing that you can do, it does nothing to do with marketing or documents, is just to purely listen and understand what a client is actually looking for and avoid saying that they need something or a solution or anything like that. Next thing is what a lot of firms are doing, but surprisingly few, but a lot of firms are doing is to send a brochure afterwards explaining your services. Now, these things don't need to be like a 50, 60 page brochure that talks about everything that you've ever done and all your achievements and all that kind of stuff. It can be a, a, an eight or nine or a 10 page explainer just saying, this is who we are. These are the people we normally work with. Uh, and this is the value that we, have, that we give to people's lives. These are the transformations that we make. It's so easy. You can automate it. You can get your team to send it. These kind of things really do set you aside from those other firms. Although some of them will be sending them, they you can guarantee that they'll also send them loads of useless information. If you can really cut through and just send them a nice to the point brochure afterwards that explains what you do, again, you're already starting that process of looking world class. And the third one is I will die on this hill of trying to get people to use uh, these things. A lot of you already probably do, and a lot of people have, have taken it on the last year or so is to use Calendly or Microsoft Bookings or one of the scheduling tools to book the discovery meeting in. The friction at this point, we talked in the last webinar about friction between you and your client. The friction at this point is at one of the highest uh, points. And what you want to do is you want to remove as much friction as you can and email tennis of trying to book meetings in, trying to find times and all that kind of stuff with you and your team really does increase that level of friction. Um, so using Calendly or Bookings where they can just pick a time, pick a date, and it's already done for them. That again, a lot of other firms will not be doing that. And that's, again, how you stand to look world class after that initial phone call. So I put an example here of, of a brochure that we've been working on recently for a firm uh, in London and Stockport, uh, MKC Wealth. Um, that's uh, really short, really to the point, and it just kind of gets to the crucial elements of what you actually, what they actually do for their clients. It doesn't go into all their qualifications and accreditations and all that kind of stuff. You can put them in there if you want to, but what these guys have done is got really straight to the point of what is it that we actually do and how do we work with you? And obviously it is nicely branded and it looks really nice as well. And then if anybody hasn't seen Calendly before, this is what it looks like. Uh, basically you just choose a time. I've just snipped this off the internet, but you just choose a date and time that you want to see a financial planner. You can choose different options. You can choose different times. It saves so much time for this for your team, but also for the client as well. So friction levels start to reduce once you start to integrate this kind of stuff. The next point in the journey is usually that discovery meeting. So in that kind of afterwards, the initial phone call, the ne logical next step is to usually have a longer discovery meeting where a lot of people do what we I don't like calling, but what we'd like to call a soft fact find where they really get in, in depth into what uh, the client's dreams, aspirations, all that kind of stuff uh, are. Sometimes you might touch on a bit of the money bits, um, but usually it's more about what does the client actually want to do with their life and where are they going? Uh, and this is, again, where you can really, really start to stand out from other financial advice firms. They might still be having vanity con in the vanity contest at this point. They might have also booked in a discovery meeting with another firm down the road. Uh, but at this point, you can really start to stand out. So what a lot of firms are doing now, and uh, we've talked about this before, is sending a first meeting checklist or an email beforehand just to say, this is what you should expect uh, from this meeting. Because the likelihood is they've never been to a financial planner before, or if they have, they didn't like them, and therefore they've came to you. So just setting out the scene. This is what we'll look at. You can send an agenda if you want to, uh, or, or even just an email beforehand to say, these are the things that I need you to bring along or I need you to think about before you come in. You can automate this so it can be sent automatically from bookings or from Calendly or from email or whatever it is, uh, so you don't have to spend time doing it. But this kind of stuff is what, again, sets you apart and makes you really look world class compared to other firms who don't tell clients anything about the first meeting and what they should bring along. Uh, again, we've talked about this in the past, but building an after meeting summary following the meeting. Um, so. We'll show you an example of one of these in a second, but rather than sending that massively long email afterwards that just says all, you know, all the bits you talked about, all the links and attachments and all that kind of stuff in there, you can get rid of all of that by just building a templated after meeting summary that just basically says what we discussed, 
here's what's next and here's some actions and then you can put hyperlinks and all that kind of stuff in there it's nice it's branded it looks completely different to what most people are doing and when you start to do that kind of stuff again you're building up that kind of perception of oh wow these guys do things differently to how everybody else uh, does things and again, I've talked about this in the past as well, but it's to send a video ask afterwards saying thank you. So firms at the moment that we're working with, the ones that are doing this kind of stuff or using similar tools like Bonjoro or something like that, the weird thing is, is that clients are actually interacting with these. Um, so it's we're always a bit skeptical about whether clients are actually going to watch them or you know, reply to them or anything like that. Uh, but these little videos that you can send after meetings really, really do work and they do actually engage with clients as well. So in this case, it would be just sending a little video afterwards. You can record it on your phone and you can get your team to send it just saying, thank you so much for, for, for meeting with us today. Um, we chatted about these things. The next steps are this, and I'm really looking forward to working with you in the future. Uh, again, nobody else is doing that that's where you've got this opportunity to stand out it's so easy to do it's so cheap to do and the really important bit is it gets you in front of the clients again now in a human business like we are in the more opportunity that a client gets to see your face and show that you actually care about them the, the higher levels of you know happiness they're going to have but also the lower levels of friction that they're going to have alongside that as well so here's an example of what an after meeting summary could look like. Um, you know, their name at the top, always put their name on it. And what we discussed in the meeting, this one's from the guys at Finovo. You can see Scott's face at the bottom there. Uh, we've got how our charges work in this one as well. So just kind of explain that a little bit for them. And then also they've got their, the next steps at the bottom there. And what you can do is you can put little QR codes in. You can put uh, links in there for their homework that they've got to complete. It's pretty much unlimited in what you can do in here. Um, but this kind of stuff is really, really, again, next level compared to other businesses. And if, in case anybody hasn't seen Video Ask before, this is what one looks like. Obviously, this is quite a highly produced one because from the Video Ask website. Uh, but in this case, you could send a video to a client just saying thank you so much or getting them to do something or whatever it might be. And then they can reply uh, on the right hand side and you can customize all those buttons and that kind of stuff, which is a really, really engaging way for your client to actually communicate with you. So the next step is usually the homework part. And by the way, if anybody has any questions or anything or, or any comments or anything like that, please do put them in the chat or in the Q&A. Uh, we'll come to them at the end. Uh, we do like to have a lot of questions at the end. So if you had any questions about anything you've seen so far, just drop them in the Q&A uh, at the bottom there. So yeah, the next point is normally homework. Uh, and this is where uh, you'll ask your clients to do some stuff for you. So it could be, you know, filling in a fact find, it could be filling out a risk questionnaire, it could be doing some uh, letters of authority, anything like that. The bits where you actually ask clients for some information. Again, if we can think about that friction level, this is rising at this point because this is where you're actually asking clients who have really nothing invested in you so far, apart from that really amazing discovery meeting to actually do stuff. Uh, and it kind of, there's a bit of cognitive confusion in, in, in the client's heads of thinking, why am I being asked to do all this kind of stuff? So what we need to do is we need to make it as easy as we possibly can and make it a simple process. And I know it's not easy. I know it's very difficult, but there are ways that we can do this. So one really, really, really simple way of making it easy for people is to just send them a Loom video explaining how the whole, what you asked them to do in the homework. And I've seen people doing this. It looks really, really cool. Uh, if, if you've never seen Loom before, we'll show you an example in a second. But it's basically just you sharing your screen, just like I am now, and then talking through uh, the things that you are asking the client to do. So for example, you could show them what looking, what filling in a fact find looks like, or you could show them what filling in a risk questionnaire looks like, or you could show them how to get a state pension forecast. Uh, as long as you've got a video that explains all of these things, it means that it at least looks like you're there to help them. Uh, but also it means that they don't actually contact you saying, I'm confused. I don't know how to do this, all that kind of stuff. So uh, Loom videos are amazing for this kind of stuff. If you use Loom already, maybe drop it in the chat and just let us know how it works for you. But that's the, probably the simplest one. And again, you can guarantee that nobody else is doing this or very few firms are actually doing this in the first place. The second step is to use a digital fact find rather than a PDF or a sheet. Now, I know that this is, again, a kind of bit of a contested area at the moment of how people do their hard fact finds. Uh, but a lot of people uh, won't be willing to give up you know, a lot of their time to talk through how much they spend on council tax and gas and electric. Or if they are willing to give that up, it will feel a bit painful to them. So we want to make that process as easy as we can. So you could use a digital fact find using tools online, or you could use cash calcs um, fact find, for example. They've got a really good one. There's lots of different ones out there, like the IO one, for example. 
But all of these kind of things, again, just trying to get that information from clients as quickly and as easily as possible. It, these aren't really signs of world class, but they're signs that, that you really, really do care uh, about a client's time and that you're trying to make it as simple as possible for them. So there's lots of different ways that you can do that um, rather than just sending a PDF or a spreadsheet or something like that, which, you know, let's be honest, nowadays we can do a lot better than that kind of stuff. And the third thing, again, is nothing really to do with documents. I would imagine that a lot of you guys in the audience are already doing this. If not, you're thinking about it, but it's to use DocuSign to get that client agreement signed. Um, so it's, it's amazing how many firms, you know, still kind of print everything out and send it to clients and all that kind of stuff. Uh, even those kind of, shall we say, less technologically advanced clients who we think aren't going to be able to use this stuff, uh, the likelihood is they'll give it a go uh, and they'll, they'll, they'll really appreciate you reducing the amount of time that it takes them to do something. Um, so just give your doc, dig, DocuSign a go and see how it works with your clients. If it doesn't work, great. You can say you've tried it and you can just go back to the default. Uh, but what world-class firms that we work with, they make that point as easy as they possibly can uh, by using something like DocuSign or Adobe Sign or something like that to get everything that they need signed ready to go for the clients um, before the next steps. So there's a Loom video example for you. Um, I would imagine that a lot of you have seen Loom, but if you've never seen it, that's what it looks like. Uh, you just share, you know, what you're doing and then have a little video of you talking through in the bottom left-hand corner. Really nice for clients and you can just pre-record it and send it to every client. You don't have to personalize it uh, each time. And then this is just an example of, of, a, of a declaration page on a client's agreement that has been um, optimized for digital signatures. So you can see there, this is very much designed to be sent on DocuSign. Really simple for the clients to complete. Really simple for your team to do. There's no printing involved. There's no scanning or anything of like that involved. It's all done uh, automatically. Uh, so these are really, really, again, useful uh, ways to reduce that friction of a client when they're onboarding with you at the first instance. I can see we've got some Q&As. Um, I will have a quick check just to make sure there's nothing. Um, there we go. Marcus says chat's disabled at the moment. I think I'm far too in, in too deep to fix that right now, Marcus. I'm afraid. So if anybody's got any comments, just leave them in the Q&A and we'll put them in there. Uh, but thank you for letting me know, uh, Marcus, as well. So let's crack on then. So the next point is research and analysis. And this is the point where you usually think, well, there's nothing really I can do here because this is our bit. This is where we're doing things. But you'd be surprised, actually, um, how useful it can be to kind uh, at this point to really think about what the client is going through. So if you think about what a client is going through at this point, you're waiting to hear back from, I was going to name an insurance company there, but let's not, let's just say a big uh, life insurance company or pension provider or whatever it might be. Uh, and it's taken ages, it's taken four weeks, five weeks, whatever it might be. The client is sat there thinking, what is going on? Um, and that's the point where you can really step in and just even with a tiny, tiny point, just make this bit seem less stressful uh, for them because the friction levels, again, are super duper high at this point because they don't know what's going on. Although you know what's going on, the client doesn't have a clue. Uh, and that's basically what we want to do is we want to tell them what's going on at this point. And that's how we can help with this step. So, for this, to make it world-class, what we can do is maybe while we're waiting for things to come back or we have got everything back and we're just waiting for that next meeting or whatever it might be, is we can prepare like a one-page explainer of the state of play. And I'll show you an example of one of these in a second, but it basically is just a one-page thing that says, here's everything that we've got currently. Here's it all in one place and you can rag rate it so you can put traffic lights on how they're doing in these different areas. You can say what's good and what's bad. You can do like a mini SWOT analysis if you want to, uh, but just a one page thing that just says here's what's going on at the moment. That kind of stuff there is plugging that gap where there's been a, a ton of a, a ton a, a huge amount of value in that discovery meeting, uh, and then they're not really getting any value until they hear back from you until maybe the, the next meeting or whatever it might be. This just plugs that gap and it provides them with something before they actually get anything uh, later down, and it makes it a bit tangible for them as well. Um, so I'll show you this example in a second, but this is super duper easy, and again that world class. Kind of side of things is increasing with each of these because it really shows how well you communicate with your clients uh, throughout the process sorry to uh, mention it again i'm not a salesperson for video ask by the way and i've seen somebody else put vidyard in there as well vidyard's great as well uh, but use something one of these tools just to give clients updates of where things are and just say sorry for the radio silence just to let you know we're waiting to hear back from xyz uh, hopefully this won't take too much longer what well, once we've got this back we'll book in another meeting with you for the next step 
this kind of stuff here is so easy to do uh, and it's invaluable at this point because the likelihood is the client's been thinking about it for ages they just haven't had anything from you so if you or your team can just record a quick video and just say just to let you know where we are uh, that really really does again increase that world-class element and you can see with all of these things it's all about communication that's all it is is it's simply just communicating with your clients constantly letting them know where things are what's going on how is it all moving along uh, and it really does just kind of reduce that friction level and increase the world-class elements and then again of course is to use calendly or bookings to book in the next meeting so once it's all done um you know we want we really don't want to after they've been waiting for however long it is for you to do all the research and analysis and data gathering we really don't want them to then have to engage an email tennis with you as well uh, because otherwise that's just going to really really annoy them um, so what we want to do is make it as easy as we possibly can in, if possible all in one place so you could put it at the bottom of the one page explainer for example you could have all the things and you could say at the bottom book your next meeting here uh, just to make it as simple as possible for them to actually engage with you. Uh, that's what we're trying to get to here. So, uh, for example, the guys at Claritas are an amazing firm. Um, I got told off once because I said they were in Yorkshire, but they're actually in Stockport. Uh, Tim and his team, uh, they build these wealth, wealth plan dashboards for their clients, which basically say, you know, here's a bit of your life. So it could be retirement planning or it could be an objective or it could be tax planning. It could be pensions, whatever it is. If you can imagine that in one of those boxes, they then say, you know, how well are you doing? So it could be yellow. We need to save more if you're going to retire properly or if this pension's not suitable for you because it's got a really archaic way of you drawing money or whatever it might be. Um, just to explain in plain English on one page what's going on. You don't need to go into too much detail about recommendations and that kind of stuff. At this point, all you're doing is you're just diagnosing the problems. Uh, and again, this provides immense amount of value for them. See, so they can say, OK, well, actually, I feel a lot better now. You've actually identified what's going on. And I knew all these things already, but you've actually told me what's going on. And for your team, this is so easy to make. All for yourself, this is so easy to make uh, going forward as well. So next point is usually what. Some people call the strategy meeting. You might have lots of different names for it. It's just that second meeting in the process uh, where you've got all the research back, you've got all the analysis back. I'm very aware, by the way, that people do things in different ways. So if this isn't matching with your journey, you can probably see how it could work at different points. Uh, but this is usually the point where uh, the world-class firms start to turn that research and analysis into it. They've diagnosed the problem. Okay, well, now this is where we are. Let's see where we can get to in relation to what you actually want to do with your life. And this is probably the most contentious part of what I'm going to say today uh, is that the, the really world class firms that we sit, that we work with tend to be the ones who go through scenarios live with clients. So um, the, they get the voyance or they get the cash calc or they get another cash flow modeling tool up and they show the client the different scenarios. So, for example, what happens if you retire here? What happens if you retire here? What happens if you, you know, what if, if one of you passes away? What happens? Uh, those pretty colors. I know you guys see them every day, so they're not as amazing to you anymore. But for clients, those pretty colors really, really do bring it to life. And especially if you're working with them, um, th th it really does start to make them more engaged as well. There's an interesting behavioral bias called the IKEA effect. Uh, and this is basically that the more you build something or the more you're involved in the building of something, the more you care about the, the impact of that. So the more you care about the end result of that. And it, the reason it's called the IKEA effect is because we usually care about stuff like wardrobe and stuff uh, that we that we've actually put together ourselves because we've spent time building them. And in this case, it, 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 the analogy matches quite nicely with financial planning is that your clients are more likely to get engaged with stuff if you actually involve them in the building of it. And that's what how you can start to build stuff live with clients. So get current situation up, start to play around with some things, start to move things around a little bit. I've seen this happen before with clients. They get really engaged. They start to lean forward on their seat and they start to look at the screen and they start to think, hmm, what happens if I do that then? This is invaluable to clients because they can literally see what it looks like in front of their eyes rather than just getting a report afterwards, which, which, which says all of this kind of stuff. If you can show them in front of their eyes, that is properly world-class. Um, and, 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 and surprisingly few amounts of firms in the UK are actually doing that as well. 
The next thing is to for teams to build an action plan to send afterwards. Uh, this is such a simple thing again, but again, it's just kind of de develop that value along the way to say, we actually care about what's going to happen here. Uh, if you can get your team to just, after that meeting, to just say, okay, well, here's a one-page explainer of all the actions that we're going to do after this. Again, you're just constantly providing clients with communication and showing them that what, what's next and what they're actually going to do. Um, it could be an email if you want to. It doesn't have to be a one-pager, but this kind of stuff, again, just increasing those communication levels. Apologies. Once again, I'm sick of seeing that word today. So I would imagine that you are as well, but I'm not going to stop banging on about it is if you could just get one of your team to send a video afterwards, just saying, you know, it was really nice to see you today. Here's the actions. Here's what we discussed. Uh, the next meeting will be uh, with us shortly. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to do build a suitability report, for example, or something like that. Um, just Again, communication, always telling clients what's going on, always showing up in front of clients. It really does uh, make a difference and make you world class along the way. So I don't need to show probably too much about this, but as you can see there, live financial planning, just getting your know, uh, cash flow up and showing clients and moving things around a little bit. Generally, we do see that the higher engagement levels with these types of clients versus those who just get it in a report or, or a, a cash flow report afterwards. It really does make a difference. And here's an example uh, of an action plan as well. So you can see what the guys have done is they've put um, priority levels. So they've rag rated it. So red, amber, green, based on how important these different actions are uh, to them and just outlined it in one page. Really simple for those to understand. Such a simple thing, but you have no idea how much this actually increases the value that clients receive. So the, the logical next meeting and most people after the kind of things like the, uh, doing the suitability report and that kind of stuff is usually some people offer this, some people don't, is a recommendation meeting where you get clients in again and you go through the report and you just talk through everything, make sure they're happy with it all. Sometimes you get application forms and that kind of stuff signed if you want to as well. Again, if this meeting isn't in your process currently, you can probably see how this could match with another meeting in the process uh, along the way. So um, this is probably one of the most important bits of this in, in working, making it world class is to build a dynamic financial plan to go alongside the suitability report. When I say dynamic, what I mean by that is, is it's not a one and done. It's not just something that you build and then put it away. It's something that you constantly come back to with clients every six months, every 12 months, and you build it along the way and you change things and you amend things. Uh, that is ongoing planning um, and things will change. So you'll have to move things around. But if you can just build this at the start to go alongside that suitability report, suitability reports are not financial plans. That's just the truth. They're not financial plans. Um, and if I was a client, I'd want to receive something else alongside the suitability report that actually says, this is why I'm doing this. These are all the things we've actually talked about. The suitability report is there for the products, the information, uh, the, the compliance elements. But what actually do you give your clients from a tangible perspective to say, this is what we're actually going to do. And if you can send that alongside the suitability report, you can see their consumer understanding is through the roof uh, because they really, really do grasp uh, what we're doing this for and why all those recommendations are being made. This isn't necessarily anything to do with a uh, document or anything like that, but even just having all application forms ready to go in one place, uh, you'd be amazed at how uh, annoyed, well, you wouldn't be amazed actually, but it is amazing how annoyed clients get at having to sign all these forms and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and you can make it so much easier for them just by having it all in one place. A lot of you guys will probably already be doing this, but just again, a, 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 a blueprint of the world-class firms that we work with, they really care about those tiny, tiny, tiny little touch points that feel tiny to you, but to a client, they're really, really painful. Uh, so if you can make it as easy as you possibly can for them, use things like bookmarks, use things like um, little stickers and things to identify where they're going to sign. Usually this stuff goes down really well um, with clients at the end of the process. And then again, Getting that video elements up and communication side up is to send a loom afterwards, explain the suitability report. So I've seen people doing this and it's really cool. Uh, they talk through the suitability report uh, with them in the bottom left hand corner, just basically just cutting out the, the BS and just saying, OK, well, yeah, there's loads of words in here, but here's actually what we're doing this for. It takes you maybe five, 10 minutes to actually record one of these. You can stick it in the file uh, and then if compliance or FCA or whatever looks in that file, they can see that you've actually evidenced that you've gone through this with the clients and you've videoed yourself talking about it. Again, from a consumer understanding perspective, you're really, really ticking a lot of boxes by doing this kind of thing. And Loom is so, so easy to use uh, as well. So 
all of those three things there, there's probably loads more that we could talk about, but those three things tend to be the biggest parts at this point. So dynamic financial plan, here's one from the guys at Transform in Edinburgh. Uh, these guys actually uh, personalize this depending on the client and the images in there. So you can see example, we've got a camper van in there, we've got Trevi Fountain in there, uh, and we've got, uh, I think something to do with the university. Even that kind of stuff visually for clients is really, really cool. Uh, and it takes seconds to do in something like Canva. So if you can get used to doing this kind of stuff, um, if you can build these templates and just have them as a, a repeatable thing that you can share with the rest of your team, these are really, really useful tools. And you can see there we've got financial summary as well at the bottom there. That just, again, increases that understanding, gets rid of all the com complexity and just says, look, here's what you've got and here's where it is. Again, really, really useful for clients. Okay, so let's look now at annual servicing. And this is a bit that we've never actually looked at before. So um, hopefully we'll find some new bits in here uh, for you to take away. So uh, it's interesting. I've never seen two firms do it the same in terms of annual servicing. Uh, everybody seems to do it in a little bit of a different way, which is great. That's what we want. We want everybody to, to be kind of dynamic and doing things in different ways. Uh, but a lot of firms, the pattern seems to be that maybe every six months or something like that, they'll check in with their clients. If you don't, that's I'm not saying that you should, by the way, but that's tend to be what we see with a lot of firms is they check in with their clients every six months on a formal basis just to say how are things going. Obviously, you'll communicate with clients usually every month, really, with things like newsletters. You might give them a call every three months. Sometimes you see them all the time because they've got really complex situations and they're constantly asking you to do things. That's fine. But the standard tends to be every six months. And that's what we're kind of going to talk about here. So again, send the client a video ask to check in on how things are. It doesn't need to be anything long. It just needs to be a nice little message from you, just or one of your team, just saying, we haven't seen you in six months time. Uh, just to remind you, these are the things we said we were going to do at the start of the year. Just be nice to hear from you just to see how things are. If you've got any questions, you can drop us a message to the right hand side here. Again, communication, always just trying to go that extra step and just making things a uh, really nice client experience uh, for everybody. Uh, what some people do is they complete a six monthly check in for clients. And I'll show you an example of one of these in a second. Uh, but again, just demonstrating that value, just constantly giving them stuff all the time. Uh, they're never going to quibble about fees or anything like that. Most people don't quibble about fees anyways, but they're never, ever going to do that if you're constantly just giving them value and showing them how valuable financial planning actually is. Uh, and one of these things can do that. So I'll show you an example in a second. Uh, and then what a lot of people do as well is they send clients postcards. Handwritten in the post, they also ask for a review just to say, you know, we would really love it if you could leave us a Google review or a vouch for or something like that, uh, just to say what working with us is like. So simple to do, so cheap as well, uh, easy to integrate into your process for your team, but they've got to be handwritten. That's the most important thing because nobody likes receiving stuff that looks like it was blanketed to everybody. Uh, and we would say that, you know, financial planning is really personal. So I think that this kind of stuff would work really well. Uh, this is an example of a six monthly check-in. So you can see there, um, they've on, on this one from the guys at Intelligent Capital, they've got things like your will is up to date, your power attorney is up to date, you're using all your ISA allowances. Uh, Again, it's always just giving them value and just saying things are okay, or if they're not okay, here's what we'll do to put them into practice. And you can see there we've got actions for you at the bottom, and they've also got a little video button there as well. So what these guys actually do is they record a Loom video uh, of themselves talking through this, just to, again, give the clients some of your voice uh, along the way. It sounds like a long and it sounds like a big thing to do, uh, but actually this doesn't take you that long at all, and it's really, really valuable for clients to receive. And as an example, here's a postcard. So you can see there we've got the QR code on the screen there. Um, I'm so millennial that my temptation to pick up my phone there and scan that QR code was ridiculous. Uh, so this is really just a nice little personalized thing along the way just to say we're thinking of you. Um, and if you need anything, just get in touch. So easy to do. Finally, then every year. So Usually that's how often people see their clients every, uh, is, every, is every 12 months. Uh, we go through things like annual suitability reports and um, all those kind of things. Uh, and this point here is, is usually where clients really like working with you anyways. Uh, so the friction levels are, are quite low, uh, but they might have a lot of things that they've been meaning to talk to you about for ages. Uh, and they might want to bring all of these uh, to the annual planning meeting or whatever it might be. So there's lots of things that you can do at this point just to make it world class. 
The first thing is to send a shorter annual planning summary alongside that suitability report. So again, just like before, we mentioned the dynamic financial plan alongside the initial suitability report. If you can have something that just goes alongside the suitability report that isn't all you know legal and, and financial mumbo jumbo that just says, what are we doing? What has changed in the last year? Where are we going? Is everything still on track? Uh, it can be really short. I've seen some where uh, they're two or three pages and they're really, really valuable for clients. Um, if you can build one of those, template it, get everybody in your firm to use it, uh, client's experience will increase. And that is really a sign of a world-class client's experience as well. Again, make sure though to come back to that dynamic financial plan uh, and also do live financial planning with clients every year. That's what we see world-class firms doing is they pull up that cash flow again or they pull up that tool again and they just say, okay, well, here's last year's one, but we've updated the figures and here's what it looks like now. Uh, for some clients, you don't need this every year, so you can pick and choose which ones it's going to be useful for. Uh, but for a lot of clients, seeing that every year, being reminded of it is really, really useful. And obviously update that dynamic financial plan along the way uh, as well. And then, of course, just like with the initial suitability report, um, send a loom video afterwards, just explaining through the suitability report, going through the things that are in there, going through that anything needs to change. Like if it's a better nicer, for example, you can say why we're doing this or whatever it might be, uh, just to, again, increase that consumer understanding. And it means they've got a recording after the meeting if they want it as well. So here's an example of an annual planning summary. Uh, this is for the guys at Plan 100. Uh, you can see there they've got nice investment objectives. They've also got a how are we getting on so far on the right hand side there. It's short. I think it's about maybe nine pages long. Uh, so it's really simple for the team to do. Really nice for the clients to receive alongside that suitability report. And again, just demonstrates the financial planning value rather than the necessarily product or investment value or anything like that along the way. And then as an example, uh, as a dynamic financial plan, coming back to this, uh, just looking at those six different areas of a client's life. How are you doing in those areas? Come back to this all the time and say, what do we need to change in these areas to make sure that you uh, actually achieve your goals? And as always, I would ask you, we mentioned these, these words a few times today, uh, but please remember that the enemy is friction. That's the thing that we really, 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 really want to put in the bin. We want to get rid of this as much as we possibly can. We're never ever, and this sounds really pessimistic, but we're never really going to get to a frictionless um, experience because there's always friction. There's always going to be some things that happen that clients just don't like doing. Uh, but what we can do is we just try and reduce that amount of friction as much as we possibly can. And the way to do that, as we've talked about today, is with the hero in this scenario, which is communication, just constantly telling clients where things are, what's going on. This is what we're doing. This is why we're doing things. Uh, this is what looks like to you. That's what you could probably realize is the pattern throughout all of this is that the, the world-class firms are communicating with their clients really well, really professionally, really nicely. Uh, and that's usually what, what sets them aside from the other firms who aren't doing this kind of stuff. So that's all from me today, but just a quick plug. Um, this is a shameless one, I think, um, to to look at uh, the Hero product from Doc Vinci. So that's uh, our um, kind of headline product that we do, uh, the Hero product. We look at your documents and we look at this client's experience. This is exactly what we do, is to work out in that 12 month, uh, sorry, in that initial and ongoing um, thing that you have with clients, experience that you have with clients, what can we change in there? What can we improve? Uh, I would imagine that in your heads right now, you've probably got at least five or six documents that you think, oh, God, I can't stand looking at them. That's why we're here is to make them really excited, but also to introduce new things along that way. So you're constantly just communicating with clients and improving that client's experience along the way as well. Uh, if you do want to book some time in uh, with me, um, if you're on your phone, you won't be able to scan the QR code, but don't worry, I'll send this recording out tomorrow alongside a book a call button as well. Uh, but if you do want to book a call with me, just a quick 20 minute chat, just to go through uh, what we can do. Uh, you can scan that QR code on the screen there um, and book some time in with me. So that is all. Uh, let's have a look at the Q&A and see what kind of things we've got going on in there. Um, so I'm actually just going to stop sharing my screen because it's nothing worse than looking at a slide all the time. Um, so the I'm going to deal with them uh, in um, order. Cost for Hero product, uh, good question, Chris, is uh, 2,500 plus VAT uh, for the 12 month period. Um, so it's uh, flat fee, 2,500 plus VAT. Again, you can find it on the website uh, if you want to have a look on there. Uh, 
let's start with them actually in order. So um, David asks, do you recommend a particular digital fact find for the client to complete? At this moment, I'm sending a pre-completed spreadsheet to, uh, to them to fill in accounts, policy numbers, but would like to sharpen this up. Uh, it's a good question, David. Um, I'm not, I, I don't really want to get into the realm of recommending individual ones, but there's good ones. There's things like Typeform, which is out there, which is really good, and that connects to CRM tools, well, which is really nice. Um, there is back office systems that do this, the CRM systems that do this. Of course, the cash calc ones, the Voyant ones, the IO ones, they're really good as well. Um, but just remember that, again, you're never going to reduce that friction in, uh, ultimately, they're always still going to have to put this stuff in. So it's about communicating to them why it's so important. It's garbage in, garbage out. If you give me crap information, your financial plan is going to be crap on the other end. So it's more about communicating with them and just explaining why we're actually doing this. Uh, that is the most important thing. Uh, Jay says, Vidyard is great, uh, similar to Loom, which allows you to also password protect for security. Yes, good point, Jay, especially in uh, other world that we work in. So thank you for that. Um, Naomi says, love Loom, haven't thought to use it in the onboarding process. Well, now, hopefully, Naomi, you will uh, after today. Uh, so thank you for leaving that comment there. Um, Andrew says, using WhatsApp is good for catch up, catching up on what's happening. I agree. Uh, and what's also good about WhatsApp is it's also encrypted as well. Uh, so the security is really high on those. Obviously, there are still some things you need to do your due diligence on, uh, but WhatsApp is really good. And the thing is, is that most of your clients will probably already be on WhatsApp. Um, so you're not going to have any problems with you know them not having that, for example. Uh, but I agree. It's a really, really useful tool to catch up with them. Um, Anonymous says, can you share these slides after, please? Yes, of course. I will put that in um, the email that I send out tomorrow with a recording um, of this as well, and also the slides in there for you as well. Um, Anonymous again says, is video ask secure and private? Um, so it's... Um, it's got all of the security certifications that we would expect from this kind of stuff. It's actually run by the same company as Typeform. So type, it's a Typeform product. So it's got all the certifications and it's from, from my experience, it is secure. And uh, what you can also do, I believe, is you can add two-factor authentication uh, for people and you can protect these kind of things as well. But uh, uh, don't take my word for that. Fact check me and just make sure that it is. Before you start using it, just make sure that it is nice and secure and private. Alternatively, what you can do is you can just avoid mentioning any really sensitive information or anything like that in those videos. Um, so just stay away from talking about products and all that kind of stuff if you want to. Uh, but I agree, it's a good question. And um, yeah, definitely go and check it out just to make sure beforehand before using it. Uh, Charles says, top recommendation for cash flow planning software. <laughs> oh God. I mean, I can only talk about the ones that I've actually used. So cash car convoy into the ones that, that I've seen uh, that are really good. But there's also so many of them out there now. I mean, I know that IntelliFlow brought one out last year or, or kind of really... Uh, started using that last year there's also a new one called conquest uh which is really good and i've seen people using that that's from i think they're from canada that's a really good tool as well uh, but again i don't want to get into that world charles because obviously there's so many that are out there that people can use uh it's probably best to actually speak to the people um in, in i was going to say in the chat but obviously the chat's disabled um but maybe a question for the next gen community to put into there as well if you want to uh chris says um what specifically do you mean by dynamic financial plan? Can you give an example? So I did give an example in the in the um, thing there. Obviously, it's just a one page, uh, well, one page that you could see. Uh, I don't mean a cash. I don't mean a cash flow report. You can put cash flow in there, um, but it's basically like a a, a a bit of a ten. Usually, they're about ten pages long. Uh, financial plan that actually says, okay, well, here's where we here's where you were. Here's what you want to do. Here's what was getting in the way. Here's what we recommended to actually make sure you do get to where you want to get to bit of cash flow in there some actions and then usually that's 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 it done the point of the dynamic thing is is that you're actually constantly coming back to it and you're constantly updating it so it's not just like i said a one and done financial plan it's constantly just coming back to it uh, all the time and just making sure you're updating it regularly uh, chris says do you have any examples of dynamic financial plan formats um if you uh want to Go through this, Chris. Um, you let me know afterwards uh, if you can drop me an email, and I'll send you some examples uh, of those. I can't actually send any physical examples, uh, but we can maybe jump on a call, or I can share a Loom video with you afterwards if you want to. Uh, somebody else asked, "Is Loom private and secure?" Um, yes, to I believe again, it's the same as the video ask one. Um, I believe it is, and I believe you can put passwords on stuff. So it, I would say that again, it's secure, but again fact check 
Um, unfortunately, you're not speaking to somebody who um, is a sales rep for Loom as much, as much as I go on about it. Uh, believe it or not, I don't get paid by them. Um, so maybe just check out with them first before using it. But I'm pretty sure you can password protect stuff. And again, just try and keep out really sensitive information from this kind of stuff if you can. That's just good practice. Uh, Chris says, 12 out of 10. Great job, Dan. Great beard too. Oh, that's my favorite comment of the day. Thank you, Chris. Um, Dean says, when does communication become too much though? That is a really good question, Dean. Um, I don't think anything that we've talked about today is too much. Um, I don't think that um, communicating with clients every day is a good thing to do. So I think that would be too much. But I think uh, as long as you're capturing, there's, there's certainly a thing of too less, of too little. And that's what the things that we're going through today is to try and to plug those gaps where it is too little. Um, because for example, with the research and data gathering, I would say that most firms at the moment are communicating with their clients too little at that point. Uh, so what we're trying to do is just plug those gaps. I agree with you. There are points where it can become too much and clients start to think, geez, well, it never shuts up this this, this person. Uh, but uh, I, I think today what we've just gone through is just trying to plug those gaps of where communication is too little. But it's a good question. Um, it really, really is. Thank you for that. Um, Jay says, fantastic presentation. Would be great to see one of the, these for the pre-client journey too. Keep your eyes peeled. You never know what might be coming soon. Um, Anonymous says, what else would you put in the postcard beyond asking for a review? Um, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, just to be honest, it's pretty unlimited in what you can put in there. Um, you know, you can put... Uh, you can put links to all sorts of different stuff in there with a the QR code if you want to. I think the most important bit I would say is, th is to make it personalized, to make it handwritten. Hardly anybody receives anything handwritten nowadays. So you can really stand out as long as you've got nice handwriting uh, with that kind of stuff. So just say, I would say just, just saying hello to them and just asking how things are and just wishing them well. I don't think it needs to be anything really complex or anything really kind of solution based or anything. Even just checking in just to say, we're here for you if you need us. That kind of stuff uh, really goes down really well. So um, hopefully that answers your question there. Um, Lucy says, what is the difference between Loom and Video Ask? Um, so it's a good question again, Lucy. Um, Loom is more share screen based. So Loom is more where you share your screen. I mean, you can have non-share screen Loom. So ultimately, it's not really that different. But Loom is usually, um, it's, it's, it's used more for walkthroughs uh, and that kind of stuff. Video Ask is actually a, it's a, it's effectively an adventure story tool. So you can build adventure stories where you say, okay, so here's a vid here's one video. Depending on what the client actually clicks on, it then brings up another video, which is particular to that option they clicked on. Uh, but also it's really good for just communicating with clients and getting them to send you videos back. So it's almost like, it's a bit like Snapchat in where you would send people a video and they would send you a video back or a message back or whatever it might be. Loom is not really designed for that kind of thing whereas Video Ask is. And you can also use it to set up things like calendar calendar links as well. So you can put a calendar link on the Video Ask, saying book in here. Again, it's just trying to reduce the amount of things that clients actually have to do, uh, which is why I would say normally say Video Ask works really well for that stuff. Oh, Lewis says, recommendations for digital fact find tools. I think we've already gone through that, uh, Lewis. I think that my question might have been asked after, uh, before I answered that question. So hopefully uh, I'm giving you some ideas there. Uh, We've got Dean, how do you manage the older generational struggles with technology? That's actually, a, again, a really, God, you're on fire today with these questions, Dean. Uh, it's a really good question. Um, I've got a bit of a, a kind of, not contrarian, but I've got a bit of a different view to a lot of people on this. It's that I've never, ever seen, when we, when we used to work with older clients, we never, ever had problems with them doing this kind of stuff. Uh, it's actually a lot of the time it's in our heads. And you, and if anybody did, uh, we would then kind of revert to the the, the, the old, I wouldn't say old fashioned, but the kind of other way of doing things that they're more used to. Um, but usually, again, we never really saw anybody fight back to this kind of stuff, no matter what their age was. Um, so I think there is definitely an argument to be made there, Dean, of the, the, the I wouldn't say older generation, but so we say the less technologically advanced people might struggle with elements of this. Uh, but then it, then it's just about reverting back to type and just going what the, maybe what they're used to. I think the majority of people who are looking at this kind of stuff will appreciate it more than than the other side of doing things, which is kind of the the, the, the less digital way of doing things that we've been used to for so long. But again, really good question. Thanks for that, Dean. Um, is there any document, uh, Heron says, is there any document you've created without words helping clients visualize uh, the journey? That is a really interesting question. 
not without words, but I'm really intrigued now to see how you would do that. Speak to me afterwards, Hiram. That's a good question. Um, we've never done it, but I would like to look at how we do that. And then final question, uh, sorry for leaving you so long, Chris, is to agree your contact plan with the client uh, as everyone is different. For example, my next update will be back end next week. Um, yeah, so everyone is um, everyone is different. You're exactly right. And no two clients are the same. Uh, so as long as you can say to clients at the very start, you can even ask them, you can say, how, how often would you like to be communicated with uh, with by me? Uh, that can be a reasonable question to ask at the start. Um, but I think, to be honest, every six months and every year, I don't think too many people are going to complain about that. If they do, you know, they're fine. You should just change it. But I don't think many people are going to complain about being communicated with every six months, especially not when they're paying for a service as well. So that is all the questions uh, dealt with there. So thank you so much to everybody for joining us today. Um, hopefully you found it very, very useful. Uh, what I'll do tomorrow is I will send out, I'll be either tomorrow or this week. I don't want to promise too much. Uh, I'll send out the recording to this and also the slides so you can watch it back afterwards uh, and look at anything you've missed. I'll also put my Carly link in there if you want to book some time in uh, with me. And if you want to find out any more information about what we do, just go to docvinci.co.uk or you can find us on the Next Gen Planners website again and just go to Doc Vinci uh, on there. But again, thank you so much to everybody for joining us on this Tuesday lunchtime uh, and we'll catch up with you soon. Look out for the next webinar, which should be in the next couple of months. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.